What is the relationship between abstraction and generality? Hello, my name is Eric Normand. This is my podcast. Welcome. So we use this term a lot uh, in programming circles, software engineering. We say abstraction. I created an abstraction. Oh, this is a nice abstraction. So we use this term a lot, and I have started myself to try to shy away from it because it is too, uh, too fraught with multiple interpretations. So let's, let's talk about that. I've gone over this before in another episode where I try to find real definitions of abstraction. And I've actually found two uh, sources that have defined it. So the first one is in Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. And they call abstraction, they call it naming some compound thing to refer to later. So in a language like Scheme, which is what the book is about, you build a new function, you know, you write this function that's kind of built out of the parts that are already existing, and you have this new function now. You give it a name, and that naming is an abstraction. That's what they call it. That, that process of naming it is called abstraction. And the nice thing about a name is that you can give it some human level meaning, right? Because it's an English word or whatever language you speak, you, you can name it in that language. And so it has some human level meaning. And then you can refer to it later, right? And there's a, a layer of indirection there. You can refer to it and then change the implementation of the function and the things that call that function don't have to know that you, you changed how it was written, right? So there's an indirection. You could imagine just putting that same function in line everywhere, right? But that's not what we do. We want to name it so that um, it's easier to work with on a human level. Okay, so that's one definition of abstraction. The other one is from Barbara Liskov. She... Uh, was instrumental in, in kind of defining what we think of as modularity. Uh, these days we take it all for granted. Uh, but she has a definition, I'll paraphrase, it's treating two different things as if they were the, the same. So basically, anytime, this is a more general definition, um, it's, it's anytime you have two things that really are different in some detail, and you ignore those details and you treat them as if they are the same. So we can see all sorts of different kinds of abstraction. Polymorphism is a kind of abstraction. If I have an array list and a linked list, there's some common set of API and I can ignore the difference and I don't have to know which one I have. I'll just treat them kind of the same and um, I'll just treat it like a list and things should work out, right? Um, they are, the more I think about these, the definitions are super related, right? I think the, the one from structure and interpretation is more specific, right? It's specifically about naming. And Barbara Liskov's is more general. It's not about naming, it's about any type of treating two different things as if they are the same. But I, I wanna focus on this idea of ignoring details. So when you name something, you're giving yourself a handle to call that thing later, to use that thing later, and you're ignoring other stuff like where it's defined, uh, how it's defined, what are the, like if it's a function, what's inside the body of that function? You don't know. Like you're ignoring that because you have this human level name that lets you ignore those specifics. Um, now, what I want to explore in this episode is this idea that we use the term abstraction 
typically to mean, I think incorrectly, we typically mean we're making something more general. We confuse the idea of abstract and general. And I think this has to do with the English, you know, layperson understanding of the word abstraction or abstract. You know, in a conversation I might say, well, that's a really abstract idea. I want to talk about real world specifics. And when someone's talking about that, they're doing the same thing. They're ignoring details. They're trying to speak at this more general level instead of talking about some specific thing. Like you might say, um, well, that person is, is just very mean. It's like, well, what specific thing did they do that was mean? Like you're abstracting this one instance into like a whole personality trait, right? Or some, something like that. And you can tell when someone's speaking probably more abstractly than they should for the given context. But typically when we speak like that in, you know, English, when we use the term abstraction like that, abstract, we mean you're speaking very generally. And I would, it's hard for me to understand what you're getting at. I would like you to be more specific, please. But in programming, typically when we create a new abstraction, so we create a new named function. That function is more specific than the things it is made of. So we're making something more specific, right? So we have this confusion where we, we call it an abstraction, but it's actually less general. So just as an example, uh, the function map, it's at a certain level of generality it can transform it can do any kind of like element wise transform between lists right so it's general it works on any list and any kind of transform right now if i wrote a function that did something like inside the body it just had one argument it took a list and then it did map square, so, you know, multiply a number by itself of that list. Now it's much more specific. It's only this function that I, this new function I wrote can only operate on numbers and a list of numbers. And it will do a specific thing, which is, uh, square all the numbers in the list. Likewise, I could have another thing that's, it takes another function that takes the operation, the function, but operates on a specific list, let's say the integers or the letters of the alphabet. It's, an, it's another list, but now you can pass any function you want to it. And so map F of the alphabet, right? So again, this is more specific. It only operates on the alphabet instead of on any list. All right. So, I hope that that shows like usually when we're building a new thing, we are building a thing that is more specific, it's less generally applicable than the things it's built out of. But we call that an abstraction and this is, and, and it, it is in these definitions, it is ignoring details. Right, it is because of that name, you're able to ignore the actual implementation. So that's a kind of abstraction. And uh, you are able to treat things differently, right? Like you're still treating this function that's an argument, like it's a different function each time. Um, and we don't have to know inside that function, we don't have to know what the function is. That's where we're able to, you know, we're, we're ignoring details. Uh, but it's more specific. And so there's a confusion. And uh, we're confusing this specific definition of abstraction that comes from software engineering with the lay definition of abstraction, which just means general and, you know, ungrounded. And we're confusing that with specific in general. So I try to uh, 
avoid using this term now, abstraction. Um, you know, if I'm writing a new function, I don't say I'm making a new abstraction. I say I'm writing a new function. Um, because I just think that this uh, causes a lot of confusion. Here's another thing. People talk about stuff like at the top of the stack is super abstract. The stuff at the bottom of the stack, the low level stuff, that's less abstract. And it's totally not true. There's no more and less abstract. You can't compare the details that this layer is ignoring with the details that this layer is ignoring. So for instance, let's go all the way down to the most general stuff. I mean, not the most, most general stuff, but very general, all the way down to NAND gates. So NAND gates, it's very general. You can build a machine out of, you know, if you have enough of them, you can build a whole computer out of it. So is that more or less abstract than the plus function, for instance? I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous question when you think about it. Like what, how do you compare the two? Um, the plus function is definitely more specific, right? Uh, it would, I, I suppose you could make a NAND gate out of the plus function. Maybe they're, maybe they're in, technically at the same level of generality. Not sure. I have to think about that. But, the plus function that we know is built on top of NAND gates. Somehow it gets translated into some NAND gates in that circuit, the computer being activated and used. Uh, and so let's stick with that. We don't want to get into a too philosophical of a discussion here, but they're both abstract in their own ways. They both ignore details. What does the NAND gate ignore? It doesn't know what you're doing. It doesn't know what circuit it is part of. The NAND gate just takes two inputs and has an output. And it doesn't know if you are uh, doing, you know, saving the world, curing cancer, or, you know, launching nuclear missiles and starting doomsday. It does not know what, what you're doing. It doesn't need to know. It's just, it ignores everything besides those two signals coming in. Um, likewise, the plus function, does, it, it can operate on any numbers. I mean, let's say integers to, to be specific, um, if it's the integer plus. It ignores what, what formula it's part of. Doesn't know, doesn't need to know. It doesn't know what numbers you're going to give it uh, and what those numbers mean, right? So everything has, uh, everything ignores details and it's very hard to compare like, you know, a set of details that it ignores or, you know, it, you can't really say that this is more or less abstract. But what I argue you can do is find general and specific right now of course this whole idea of Turing universality really throws a monkey wrench in in this idea of a hierarchy like that of general at the bottom and specific at the top because if you find a Turing complete system oh, you can just create the whole stack again on top of it um, so that's that's weird <laughs> and uh, really does um, does mess this up but in general when we're developing applications we're making stuff more specific and you know for instance we make a certain like data structure well there are many the, the idea of general uh, data structures is very general so like a c struct the idea is general you can make any data structure right any set of data elements in that structure um, but then you make a specific one that has a certain set of data elements uh, so you're making you're making us something more specific and um, anyway I just I just feel like this is one of those things that really messes us up 
um, in thinking and in, in communication. And I see it all the time where, oh, people talk about low level stuff as being less abstract. And I just, it, it, it bugs me. And I can see all the mistakes that they're making in their logic because they have this faulty idea. So like I said, I try to stick with the term specific and general and um, avoid using the term abstract. It's not, a, it's not a relative term. It is simply a, an, a, you know, an objective fixed it just means this ignores some details. It treats some thing, two different things as if they were the same. And um, there's no way to compare them. There's no spectrum of like concrete to abstract. Uh, everything is ignoring details and is, is ignoring something. And so it's almost like a useful, useless term, unless you're using it in the very specific sense of like in lambda calculus, making a new function is called an abstraction. But then again, it's so easily confused with the, the English language term, the like lay general, general term, and the way we use it in software engineering. So I suggest you avoid it. I'm avoiding it myself. And okay, well, let's end it here. My name is Eric Normand. This has been another episode of my podcast. Thank you for listening. And as always, rock on.